The U.S. Food and Drug Administration requires a black box warning on all FDA-approved hormone replacement therapy package inserts, including oral micronized progesterone. The warning basically says that progesterone increases the risk for breast cancer, among other risks. But does progesterone really increase breast cancer risk? What about progesterone-like hormones called progestins? Is the risk the same with all of those hormones? I'm Steve Goldring, the hormone pharmacist from SimpleHormones.com. I've earned multiple certifications about hormone replacement therapy. Doctors trust me to teach their patients, both women and men, about bioidentical hormones. I'm here to help you move from confusion to clarity about hormones and your menopause symptoms. In this video, I'll explain an important French study that helps fill in some of the gaps about hormones and breast cancer. In the scientific world, there are several different types of studies. Each one has its strengths and weaknesses, pluses and minuses. One type of study is a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled clinical trial. It's set up so there are two or more groups of patients. Those groups receive either an intervention of some sort, some type of treatment or hormone or drug, or the group will receive a placebo, something that's inactive, doesn't do anything. Ideally, the patients in each group are blinded. They don't know whether they're getting a drug or a placebo. Double-blinded means neither the patients nor the researchers know which patients are getting a drug or hormone and which are getting a placebo. A randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial is often called the gold standard of clinical research. The big advantages of a randomized trial is that it can eliminate a lot of the variables and really dial in some of the conclusions. The huge disadvantage, though, is that this type of trial is always extremely expensive. One of the biggest randomized trials ever conducted was the Women's Health Initiative, which I've talked about in several of my videos. The WHI involved 16,000 women and cost over $1 billion. That FDA black box warning I mentioned comes directly from the Women's Health Initiative. The warning explicitly states, quote, The WHI estrogen plus progestin substudy demonstrated an increased risk of invasive breast cancer. In the absence of comparable data, these risks should be assumed to be similar for other doses of estrogen and medroxyprogesterone and other combinations and dosage forms of estrogens and progestins. So basically, the FDA assumes that all hormone combinations have equal risk for breast cancer and other health problems. Let's take a look at a study called the E3N EPIC Cohort Study. 80,377 French women took various kinds of hormone replacement therapy, and they were followed for around eight years. This was not a clinical trial. Instead, it was a prospective cohort study. Women were combined into a cohort or a large group. Then they were followed both through their own medical records with their permission and through surveys that were sent out periodically. Results of the E3N study shed some light on HRT risks. The title of the study hints clearly about the conclusions. The title is this, Unequal Risks for Breast Cancer Associated with Different Hormone Replacement Therapies Results from the E3N Cohort Study. Well, E3N showed that different types of hormone replacement therapies have significantly different risks for breast cancer. The Women's Health Initiative results showed that women taking a combination of estrogens from horse pee, along with a progestin called medroxyprogesterone acetate, or MPA, those women had a slight increase in breast cancer risk that wasn't quite statistically significant. That just means it could have been a coincidence. It was so small. The E3M cohort study looked at several different combinations of hormones. Those are listed on the table on this screen. E3N showed that women taking a combination of estrogen plus oral progesterone had the lowest risk of breast cancer. Women taking estrogen plus a progestin called didrogesterone, which is only available in Europe, also had a very low breast cancer risk, just a tiny bit more than progesterone. But women taking estrogen along with one of several other progestins, like MPA, had significantly higher breast cancer risk. There's never been a randomized double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial comparing estrogen plus progesterone with 
other hormone combinations. There never will be either. It's simply too expensive. The results of the Women's Health Initiative have been basically taken as proof positive that hormones cause breast cancer. Even though that conclusion is a complete misinterpretation of the Women's Health Initiative. The results of the E3N EPIC cohort study, they aren't the final word on hormones and breast cancer risk, but they are a crucial piece of evidence that the FDA is basically ignoring completely. Other HRT clinical trials have also shown that estradiol and progesterone don't increase the risk of breast cancer. Maybe you're a bit confused or even nervous about taking hormones for your menopause symptoms. I've personally heard from literally thousands of women who struggle with one huge question. It's a simple question, but it looms large. Should I take hormone replacement therapy, HRT, for my menopause or not? Well, I've created a digital course that shows you more evidence, just like what I've shared in this video, that can help you make an informed HRT decision. Your concerns, your fears, your hesitations about hormones, they aren't unreasonable. They don't come out of nowhere. You've been told for over 20 years that hormone replacement therapy causes breast cancer. The FDA black box warning is just another very blatant example of exactly that. Visit my website at simplehormones.com slash decision to learn more about how you can get access to the course and make your HRT decision. My course helps you address those fears with empathy, but also with the evidence from the science that your doctor may not even know about. Evidence that helps you understand how you've been misled about menopause all these years by doctors, by the news, even by the FDA. It's not your fault. I look forward to seeing you inside that course. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to ding that little bell to get notified anytime I post a new video. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking to you again next time.